There's nothing better on a lazy afternoon than a good whodunit, especially if I get to be the one who solves it. Nothing wrong with throwing on an episode of Columbo. In fact, it's required if you're a millennial, along with getting into arguments over Steven Universe and killing the cheese industry. But one of my favorite genres of games is the detective or investigation genre, whether it's fighting crooked prosecutors, solving a boat mystery, or browsing fictional websites. If you can piece together a mystery and have that parlor scene moments, I'm probably gonna play it. Sherlock Holmes, Shadows of Doubt, The Sinking City, Poirot, The Root Trees Are Dead. Give me any and all of them, please. I'm also a fan of trashy fun. The middle children of video games, the 6 out of 10s, the guilty pleasures. Sure, Fear 3 is not very good, but have you considered that it kicks ass, actually? Hero of the Kingdom looks like a Facebook game from the early 2010s, and I'll play each and every one of those games until that company dies. And Deadfall Adventures did the first-person Indiana Jones thing long before Machine Games got the official license. Now, Unsolved Crimes may be a bit of an unknown title to you. It was an unknown title to me. It's one of many Nintendo DS games that probably got a small print run and existed primarily as loose cartridges and a GameStop counter basket. Even a brief look at it would make you think that it's the kind of shovelware that was rushed to market to be thrown at children. And that's not exactly... Okay, it's not a AAA game, but there was some effort put in here. Also, you probably wouldn't want your kid playing a game that talks about domestic violence, serial killers, corporate whistleblowing, and suicide. Yeah, I'm not using unalive or whatever baby replacement words YouTubers like to use. I think I'll be fine. It actually comes from Now Production, a studio with deep roots in the industry dating all the way back to 1986. Their greatest claim to fame would probably be the Klonoa games for the Game Boy Advance, or the extremely underrated The Munchables for the Nintendo Wii. Unsolved Crimes presents itself like a campy 70s cop procedural show, complete with its own dorky little theme song. And each episode starts with a little CG cutscene with silhouettes, kind of like an Ace Attorney case if you got it at Aldi or something. <laughs> After a brief rundown of the case particulars, including the victim and suspects, you head to the crime scene to do some investigation and piece together what happened and who was responsible by answering queries, which test your knowledge of the evidence and testimonies. Occasionally you'll head back to Chief Abbott to reiterate your findings, which are kind of unnecessary. Sometimes you do have to come up with additional theories here, but it's often just repeating answers you've already given before, and the cases are only about a half hour long in general. Investigating the crime scene is not that unlike Hotel Dusk, with a combination of directional pad movement and stylus camera turning. Your partner will comment on seemingly everything around you regardless of its importance. Y yeah, I, I can tell that it's toilet paper. Sometimes you'll have to look around or under objects to find important evidence, and all things considered, the interface is pretty decent. You can rotate evidence around to find occasional additional details, and you can quickly switch between tabs with the shoulder buttons. There are moments where you'll need to rotate a dial or turn a wrench, and the stylus detection can be a bit erratic here, to the point that they simplified the save puzzle beyond my initial understanding. The note says, start at noon, turn back 3 hours, then forwards to 1pm, which sounds like you're turning the dial to those positions, like on a clock, but instead you're meant to do 3 full rotations to the left and 4 to the right. It wouldn't surprise me if the stylus' inaccuracy led them to changing the puzzle to prevent frustration from overshooting, but the simplified solution doesn't really match up to the clue, in my opinion. The cases themselves range from locked room mysteries to testimonial collusion to even bomb defusal. Some of the cases are fairly clever, while others are a bit too easy to suss out from the very beginning. That makes some of the querying a little too handholdy, leading you towards conclusions without allowing you a moment of deduction for yourself. Sometimes you'll be a step or two ahead of the story and have to take baby steps with Marcy, or you'll present evidence that's accurate to the final narrative, but you'll be told you're wrong because because it's not the right time for it. Overall, though, the query system is fine as a way of connecting the dots of the mystery, but I do wish there was a bit more variety to the puzzle solving than just answering multiple choice questions or pointing to an item. In one case, you point out a bullet's trajectory as well as where suspects were seated, 
And that's cool, but there wasn't enough of this. There are, however, mini-games to break up the action between cases, as the game has a story-long arc about rescuing your partner's sister after she gets kidnapped from her modeling agency. These aren't long excursions, just a couple of minutes each, almost to the point that they don't really add much of anything. The shootout sequence is kind of enjoyable in a Babby's First Time Crisis sort of way, but the car chase feels like a bad mobile game, and the timed sequence in the parking lot is just too basic to be thrilling. Visually, the game is nothing special, but the crime scenes at least have an adequate level of detail to them considering the Nintendo DS's technical limitations. You can still tell it's a lower budget game though, as talking character portraits are limited to just a couple of characters for the entire game, and any testimonies from suspects are given off-screen and put into your notepad. You won't be interrogating anyone or having any OBJECTION moments. Your partner or the chief will often just leave and then come back after a fade-out with new information, and final confessions are text-only prose on top of a still image. The characters themselves look a little like the kinda slightly better than poser models you'd see in your average Games for Girls of the 2000s, but they're not upsetting to look at either, and music has that 70s Miami Vice-ish vibe and keeps you in the detective mood. So, is this game good? Maybe not good, but it is enjoyable. It's always exciting to enter a new crime scene and examine everything, figure out the details of the crime, and make deductions. It just would be way better if it let the player have more of a role in that discovery, too. Some of the later cases have a few leaps in logic that make more sense after the fact than when you're asked, and that can really stretch your brain out, but too much of the game is on rails and feels a tiny bit condescending. But if you're like me and can enjoy something a bit jankier and smaller in ambition, then this might be a fun way for you to spend a couple of evenings. Do you have a guilty pleasure game? A trashy 6 out of 10 that you'll defend to the bitter end? Let me know in the comments. On the previous video, Tom They says, Does Gimmick 2 coming out soon count amongst these indie darlings? Well, I definitely screwed up and forgot about that one, but yes it does. And I'll be doing a video on it sooner than you might think. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you should probably do that, and make sure notifications are on. I also have a Patreon where I post videos early, as well as host a Discord server for fans to hang out and chat in, and you don't even have to be a paying member to join it. But hey, even a dollar a month helps, trust me. Until next time, you'll find me in another castle.